Welcome everyone to Motorsport Manager, a new game on the channel that I'm very, very excited to have uh, because this is a, a type of game that I've really been wanting for some time. There are a few uh, types of games of, of this type out there, but this one is very exciting because of the, the possibilities that it offers going forward. Now, before we get into the gameplay, let's take a look a little bit at what it is and uh, what all we can do in the game. You see our three options here. We can start a new career. We have a few challenges we can do, or we can do a single race. Well, Motorsport Manager is a racing simulation, but you're not driving this time. You're managing. You're going to manage a team. You're going to manage all the employees. You're going to manage the money. You're going to manage the drivers during the race as far as how aggressive they are and how they treat the car. And you're going to attempt to take your team to the very top of that particular championship and hopefully win races and titles. So let's get started. Let's take a quick look at the preferences and see what kind of uh, various settings we have. The video settings, we have multiple presets here all the way from low to very high. What you see here are the presets that it automatically loaded uh, for my particular uh, computer configuration. And uh, if you want to see more about my computer configuration, take a look at the about settings in uh, the channel. So everything is either basically an on off. One thing I will say right up front is this game is doing a wonderful job of various tool tips that pop up and that uh, help screens that you have options to see if you have any question about what anything on the screen is at any time, whether it's during the race or uh, while you're managing your team, they do a wonderful job of giving you instructions and information about those items. So here we have our basic options. You can see everything from resolution to uh, various quality settings. I'm gonna leave all those as default. Let's move over to game settings. Now for me, all of these default to uh, British pounds for the currency and everything else follows from that. So I had to make several changes here to get the temperature and, and various conversions the way I wanted them. But you do have options for metric in all of the different formats, even the time you have options for different formats for that as well. One thing that you'll want to uh, pay particular attention to are when you're in a career, you have option, three different options for the lengths of the various uh, races and practice sessions. I've chosen to go with short to begin with. It makes for shorter races and shorter practice sessions, but you can definitely increase those if you prefer. Tool tips, I definitely uh, would recommend you leave these on because as I said, they give excellent uh, information if you, particularly if you're not uh, really up to, to speed on what the various things do within a race team and what the various jobs are within a race team because you'll want to know those going forward. All right, number of rolling saves and do we want auto save on? Uh, the number of rolling saves is maxed out at five. I was actually looking to make that maybe a little bit higher uh, in, cases I, in case I wanted to go back a little bit farther, but um, I think five should do the trick for us. Moving on to audio settings, not a lot going on here. Uh, I've turned the music off for the purposes of uh, recording, but everything else I've basically left alone. And finally, we'll go to our controls. Controls are very simple. Your W, A, S, and D to move the camera around. And then you have some various shortcuts, which I've actually not seen the need to, to really use because everything you need to get to these various uh, sections are right on the screen, basically any time that you would need to get to them. All right, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and hit continue and get back to our main screen. Now, we are going to go ahead and start a new career. But for the purposes of the video, I am going to turn the tutorials off simply for the time saving function. I definitely recommend leaving these this uh, tutorial function on because they do a great job of working you through each and every section of the game. So keep that in mind. But again, for time purposes, I'm going to leave that off for our recording. Again, you have an option here to set your session links and we can see here, you go anywhere from 12 to 20 laps, races on the short all the way up through long, which would be considerably longer, you know, around four to five times longer races, in fact. 
and then you have the currency you want to use and then your date format so let's go ahead and get started all right so our name we're going to use me pit gaming and our date of birth i'm actually just going to leave as is continent we're going to go north america but you can see you have several options here uh, this has a definite formula one open wheel type feel to it so everything is is really based around what country is your driver from what country is your uh, engineer from and that kind of thing so there's a lot of flavor to the game uh, that you would expect to see from an open wheel type game we're going to choose north america and you can see the various different options we have here i'm going to choose united states and then you have a backstory okay so what's my backstory and what your backstory does is it gives you various boost to either your driver your team money that kind of thing we can be an ex-driver which will give us a morale boost for our drivers we can be ex-engineer which will speed up the design time for our parts and we'll have a, a financial boost which will affect the payments we have also one that will definitely come into play is your uh, political if you want to use this option voting power you'll have a plus four which is very big naturally you have a plus one for each session that you'll vote on and the things you'll be voting on will be for rules for your particular uh, driving series so if you are in a, a series and they're thinking about making a change to a track layout or using a different tire next year or a different engine package and so on you get a chance as the leader of the team to vote on those changes and whether or not you want to see those implemented you as well as the leaders of the other teams within the championship so having a plus four is a very big deal because it gives you extra votes that you can either use or save up over time and so that you're you can actually have more clout and more influence on one particular decision rather than evening it out on all decisions not going to spend a whole lot of time here i'm just going to go and because quite frankly i generally don't pay a whole lot of attention to our to our avatar here i'm going to turn the facial hair off and no glasses that looks good to me and here we go so i'm going to go ahead and turn these off because i don't want any bonuses on our career that's probably not a wise decision but i want to learn everything the hard way and make all the mistakes i can make to be able to learn my way through the game now we start by choosing which series we want right now there are three series in the game i'm not sure if they have plans to expand that or what type of modding support there's going to be because being from north america i would love to see a few different options actually added one would be the obvious choice of nascar which is very popular here in uh, north america particularly the usa but i wouldn't also mind seeing other maybe open wheel options or maybe some of the uh, uh, road racing options that are not open wheel related added to the game but we'll see how that goes for now i'm going to choose the lowest tier which is the european racing and we start by you can get an idea of each championship obviously the world motorsport championship it's the tier one which would be uh, basically analogous to the formula one racing as it is you can take a look at the various rules and if we look at the rules package here it gives you an idea now the championship that i have chosen has a lot more strict rules and a lot more things that you're not allowed to do such as you don't have to worry about developing front and rear wings because these are standardized and because of that you don't have to worry about developing anything new for those and it saves you some money and time so it's much more of a uh, beginner friendly series of the three so we're going to choose it as well you can see the various sliders here this will be in a moment when we choose a team that we're going to uh, that we're going to take control of we'll be able to see where we rank here but as you can see overall the team performances are quite different from series to series so the better you are in the game hopefully you'll be able to move your way up through to where you can eventually 
dominate the World Motorsport Tier 1 section. So again, as I mentioned, we're going to start out European racing. And as we go through our career, we'll be able to keep tabs on what the other two series are doing as well. So it's not like they just go away simply because we don't choose them. Now, here we go. Now we'll choose uh, between 10 teams that we want to uh, take control of and command throughout our career. And these will range. You can see here the expected finish. If we choose this particular race team is first. Okay, they expect to win. And that is your team principal expects to win. The owner of the team expects to win and the pressure is very high, meaning that if you don't win or finish very well, then they will become unhappy with you and you could get fired. So do you want to start out with the top team in the division and try to quickly move your way possibly up through by winning uh, an early championship and moving on to other divisions? Or do you want to start with a team at the bottom that expects to finish last. Now, it says expect to finish 10th. This is the team finishing position. Each team fields two cars for a total of 20 cars on the grid for each race. Now we get a glimpse at these various sliders. And again, the tooltips will pop up, letting us know, uh, and this is all relative. If we come back here, you can see they are at the very top in car performance. They have the best drivers. They have the best headquarters. They have great staff, not quite to the top, but great staff. And then their sponsors aren't quite as good. But if we come back down to Predator Racing, you can see that they are at the bottom in every classification. Also of importance to some folks will be the country for each race team. Again, this is a very popular idea for, for open wheel racing. You can see if you have a particular country that you want to use. For me, I'm going to use ZRT simply because they're from the United States. And you can see here, we're going to start out with definitely a less than stellar car. We do have some good drivers. You can see our drivers are pretty good. Headquarters is not good. Staff, not good. But our sponsors are pretty good. Again, it probably has something to do with the United States, but again, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if these are uh, analogous to real world teams, but I'm gonna choose United States and we're gonna get moving. Now, I've played a little bit in this game, so I have some idea uh, of what's going on. I've played maybe an hour or so just to get a brief idea of what was going on in some of the controls, but basically I didn't wanna spoil too much because I really like the idea of seeing a lot of this with you guys for the very first time. So we take a look at our main screen for the team. We see our two drivers. We see the chairman's happiness, chairman or owner, how happy they are. And right now they're not uh, too happy and our job security is uneasy. So not a good way to get started for us in our new career of running a motorsports team up here, you can see uh, where the averages in the division are. And you can see in most cases, we're well below that average in car headquarters and staff, while our drivers are pretty good and our sponsorship is pretty good. Now we'll have, uh, as this is a, a basic screen, which is summarizing what we have options for, uh, we'll have options to improve our parts. You can see where we stand within the uh, championship. Let's take a look at one of the various screens that we have down at the bottom. Again, we haven't started our career yet, so most of this is very early stages. Okay, so we'll have access to various jobs, so we will have the option of leaving this team throughout the season as it unfolds. Okay, we have our various player stats, and these will go up or down based on how we do within the races and also running the team financially and uh, making various decisions. So these will change. Okay, right now we don't have any other options for any types of jobs. So let's move on to our mailbox. All right, here you've got uh, various mail that will come in. You'll have anything from requests from reporters for an interview 
or you might have uh, information from sponsors here. Your drivers will uh, send you emails. Here are two drivers. And they're letting us know some basic background information. Uh, our two drivers here seem to get along well, but each driver has their own personality, things that uh, they prefer, things they like, things they don't like. So you can hurt or help their morale based on the decisions you make, uh, particularly in the type of car you give them. All right, let's work through here. We have a, a chief designer as well as a few race engineers. This is our chief designer who's letting, letting us know a little bit about our facilities, which right now are lacking for sure. He's also letting letting us know that on particularly on our car, one of the things we could we really need to work on is brakes. Okay, so we'll keep that in mind. Okay, this is our head scout. You can see here this is our scout, and he's going to let us let us know where our various drivers are projected to finish, and a little bit about each one. Okay, here we see must respond. So what do we need to do? So we need to clarify just how well we think we're going to do this season. And they're predicting we come in ninth, which is next to last. Remember, there are 10 teams each fielding two cars for a total of 20 cars on the grid. So they're thinking we're going to finish next to last. But we have the ability to choose a no, I think we're going to finish better than that seventh, maybe ninth, or even 10th. And that will affect how much money we start out with. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and agree that we're going to finish not last, but next to last. I'm going to be a little ambitious by not choosing that, but let's say we're going to accept the target of ninth. And again, that's going to determine how much money we're going to have. All right, let's move on and take a look at our car. Now we have options here. This will be very important. You'll be spending a lot of time in this particular screen because we'll have an option to design new parts, fit these new parts once they're done, and also improve our parts. Now all of these will be determined both the cost and the speed at which we can accomplish these things will be determined by the type of staff we have. How good are they, uh, particularly based on uh, the other teams and how, how we stack up there. Okay, we're not ready to jump into those just yet. We're going to come over and take a quick look at our headquarters. Now, this is something that will be more of a long-term project. And as we move around, you can see that we have a factory and a design center to start up with. And that's because these are the first two buildings we have. You can see that we have the option to upgrade these, but this is very expensive, $8 million each. So not something I'm going to have the ability to do just yet and also these were 20 week uh, schedules to do the upgrades so we're nowhere near where we need to be there and of course that would lend itself to what we saw on the previous screens which is that we don't have very good facilities so we understood that coming in so that's not a problem let's take a look at some new buildings that we could build right now again we don't have the money for this just yet but here's some things that are we can do a forecasting center, which as the tooltip would allow us to see, it will allow us to see weather patterns a little bit farther out to allow us to better plan for the changing conditions during a race. Scouting facilities, we'll want to, as time goes on in our career, we'll want to scout other drivers and also managers and, uh, and so on for our race team. So staff and drivers will be very important to uh, keep updated as we go through our career, we'll want to make sure that we're maxing those out uh, as money allows. Then we have a staff center. This is where we can improve our staff over time and the various things such as driver fitness, driver focus, and also improve the various uh, staff statistics. And then we have some other things going on. You can see there's an R&D center here for brakes, test tracks, telemetry centers, and so on. But we'll get to those as we go along. These will affect the various stats for the car, the staff, and also bringing in money. As you can see here, a few options for theme parks and road cars. So we can actually build things and sell items that will increase the amount of money we have available to us. Okay, but these are more long-term items. So let's move on to our team itself.
Okay, here we can see who the chairman is, her age, and how happy she is with us right now. And as you can see, we start off sort of in the hole because one of our drivers has the trait of being selfish. So that does not help out anything. So we're going to have to have, have to manage that as well as other things. So we have one driver who's pretty good, nearly three out of five stars, right at three full stars. And the star here that is not filled in but highlighted, that gives us an idea of how good they can become. So here you can see our second driver is basically as good as she's going to get while our number one driver here, our best driver has some room for improvement. Then we have a development driver here that's not all that good right now and doesn't look to have all that much in the way of future promise. Our lead designer, just a little bit over one out of five stars. So that's gonna be very important for us to improve on as we move forward. And then we have our race mechanics. Now you have one mechanic assigned to each driver. So we're gonna have, uh, and then this will determine again, how good our car is, how good the upgrade parts we put on, and then how those parts improve over time, as well as how our, good our setups are for each race. So again, a very important position here of race mechanic with each driver. Now, another thing is you don't really want to change out your race mechanics any more often than you absolutely have to because they develop a relationship with their particular driver, whoever we assign them to. And that's important because over time, they get better communication between the two and you'll get bonuses the longer that they're with their particular driver. Then we see our marketability. We want this to be as high as possible because the higher our marketability function is, the more money we can obtain from sponsors. So definitely want to keep that going up. And how do you get that go continue to go up? Well, you perform better on the track. So that is huge. Also, uh, each of your drivers will have marketability here. And the higher their marketability, it means that the sponsors are more attracted to them. Okay, we see the same information here. Again, this is very dynamic. So as we work on our car, get new and better parts, this, num this uh, figure could go up, hopefully it goes up. And then as we build and improve our headquarters, same thing for that and same thing for staff. Let's take a quick look at the driver screen. And we can see more in depth information here about our two drivers plus our reserve driver. Now, you also see a very important section here for scouting. Now there is a dedicated tab that we'll get to momentarily for scouting, but you can see here, if you're looking for a new driver, if you're already looking to replace one or more of your drivers, then the scouting tab is where you'll do just that. And again, we'll get to that more in depth momentarily. But here you can see, all right, you've got various driver details. Let's take a look quickly there. And you can see the various um, overall ratings we have there. Very low fitness and not quite as good at braking, but some very good stats otherwise. So we as you remember from uh, the very beginning team screen, we do have good drivers for the series, better than average drivers for the series. And this is why, this is a very good driver. However, if we come down here and look at our traits, we have a good trait here of born leader, but then we have the selfish trait, which really hurts the team's morale and the happiness of the chairman, not good. It also affects negatively their relationship with their mechanic, also not good. They also are very spoiled, which again, hurts their relationship with their mechanic. So you have to take the good with the bad. A lot of good traits here with that affect the various speed and uh, overtaking on the track. But at the same time, there's also some downside for this particular driver. They will not take team orders. That's good because I don't plan on issuing any, but should the, the need arise, they're not interested. Now you can also see how much they're costing us each race, as well as if we wanted to fire them right now, how much we would owe them to break their contract, which remains for another 34 months. So this is more of a long-term deal. Okay. They also have a couple of bonuses that if they qualify third or above, they get some additional bonuses. And here we could compare them to other drivers. That's where we'll get back into. We could either compare them to our number two or reserve driver, or we could go back to uh, the main screen and scout out 
other drivers that are not currently on our team. Now, our second driver here, she is more content, okay? It says here that she doesn't care about winning trophies. Well, that sounds good because it raises her morale, and it also allows her to uh, save us some money because her earnings that she desires aren't quite as, as high. But it also may mean that maybe she doesn't try as hard. Maybe she's content with where she's at, so maybe her drive to improve really isn't there. So we'll have to see how that progresses. And then you can see here our uh, what would normally be reserved for a development driver, a reserve driver, and the stats here as well. So definitely not good enough that we want to, uh, to swap them out with our number two driver. Let's move on to our staff screen. Now, we're actually going to do something here because our lead designer is extremely important to our car and team overall. So I'm going to want to get a much better designer if I can. Okay, so we're going to actually be scouting them him uh, here momentarily. But you see each designer has some abilities. For this particular designer, their build time is two days less for each million dollars spent. So that can help us get, get parts done quicker. Also, they add a random great component whenever you're looking at good components. And this is how you progress through each component. You'll start out with average components and then as you get more and more development done, you'll have access to better parts. Now, then we come into our race mechanics. This race mechanic is paired up with our best driver. You can see right here, we have the ability to swap that out if we so desire, but generally you want your best race mechanic paired up with your best driver. Um, also, maybe personality traits will dictate that you use a certain race mechanic with a certain driver. But again, you wanna keep them together as long as possible. Here they've been together 12 weeks, so we're not quite up to the level one unlock, which would allow our soft tires to wear more slowly, which is always good. Anytime you can get more wear out of the tires or more uh, wear out of any of the components, that's a good thing. So we wanna keep them together unless we have plans to get a better race mechanic. But again, then we would start all over in their time together and take longer to get to the bonuses. So something you have to take care of. Also, they have contracts as well. You can see it costs us money to fire them before their contract runs out. And with that in mind, let's go into scouting. Let's take a look at some potential designers because I'm really interested to see what we have. Now, you can see here where they're currently employed how much they're gonna cost you per race or how much they're making right now, and then how much it would cost you to break their contract, assuming they would even want to come to your race team. Now for us, we're in the lowest tier of the three series, and we also have the one of the lowest teams in that series. So if, it would be nearly impossible for us to lure one of these uh, already currently employed away from their team, especially for the world motorsport. You know, they're probably not going to want to move down divisions. But here we see these folks are unemployed. So let's take a look at what we have. And very good designer here. You can see very high marks here. So we could choose to approach this designer. And you can see immediately they're not interested. They, and this is not surprising given how good they are, they're looking to get a job in a higher tier series. Okay, so we're gonna back our way out of that screen. And let's take a shot at someone a little bit farther down. Let's see about, all right, they are already, okay, let's take a look here. Again, wow, not good for rear wing, but in our particular situation, we don't have to worry about that because it is a, uh, a spec part or a uh, not a design part and it's standard across all the teams. So let's approach them. Okay, so he's interested. So let's take a look at some stats here. Very nice overall. Again, three and just a little bit into four. So it looks like we've got some good possibilities there. Okay, and let's back out for now. Let's see. Oh, here we go. A couple of folks that are from the USA. Let's go ahead and take a look here. 
what we've got, all right, front, ring, front wing and rear wing are not going to be helpful for us uh, in particular because those are not allowed to be worked on. And I see, I like the, the rating for brakes for Karen over Peter. And let's see, front wing, suspension. Okay, I think we're going to go with Karen because I like the brakes and suspension numbers there. Those are going to be very impo important. Unfortunately, engine is not something that they're very good at. Mm. So let's let's approach Karen and see if if she is interested. We can take a look here. Okay, she's going to give us an additional good component slot, which is good, costs money, but it could be good. Let's approach the designer. All right, they're interested. Let's go ahead and start the negotiations. Now, I have no idea what to do here. So it says expectations, wages are fairly important. She wants a long-term contract, which would be here, short, middle, and long-term. She wants a nice sign-on bonus. And she says the bonus size isn't very important. So we're gonna try to get these as close to right as we can at the beginning. Now, patience. She has three marks here. And so this is basically, uh, my understanding is this is how many opportunities we have to come back to the table. So we're gonna make an initial offer here of not 75. Let's see, what is the maximum? So maximum is 225. So we're going to back off to about 180. We're gonna offer that long-term deal because I do think this is somebody we can grow with, uh, particularly in this lower tier series. So let's go ahead and offer that long-term contract that, that she's looking for. And we're gonna add on a signing bonus. Again, what is the maximum here? 600,000, well, we don't have enough money for that just yet. All right, let's come back down. What is the minimum? 60,000. We're gonna go at 240. And she's saying the bonus size isn't very important. We'll go ahead and make that. All right, let's see. All right, if we finish seventh or above, again, this is out of 10 teams, then she'll get a little bit of a bonus. Let's go ahead and send her that contract offer over. You can see proposal has been sent. All right, and Let's quickly move. We've just seen the scouting. We've seen what we can do here. We can scout additional drivers or race mechanics. And we're going to hold on to uh, that for just a moment. And let's take a look at our finances. We have an available budget right now of 500000 The re reason I say right now is we're going to look at the sponsorship in just a moment, and that will greatly affect uh, the type of money we have available. Okay, right now we have various expenses such as drivers work on next year's car, not even this year, but next year's car, mechanics, designers, and so forth. So let's move over and see if we can do something about this with our sponsors. All right, in the sponsorship tab, we see that we don't have all of our sponsorship uh, slots filled up. We've actually got six slots you can see here, three on this side, three on this side. Well, what's the difference? Well. The sponsors on this side give us fixed amounts of money. And then over here, we have sponsors that want to pay us various amounts based on where we finish in the race. Now, for the start off, I'm, I'm really going to be focused on these. We start with, looks like this particular sponsor is located in the U.S., which is good because that's where we're based. And the deal is for six more races, and they're going to pay us $150,000 per race and it doesn't matter where we finish okay so it being a lower tier team in the series that's important to me now here are the two option, options we have for this particular thing we can do a deal for 13 races at 300,000 per race nothing up front or we can get a little bit up front here on a shorter term deal now for me I think I want to go here because this seems to be the more lucrative offer for us right now and important for me to get some money coming in okay for this offer oh well, well we don't have any anything to make a decision on here so we've got 
12 races. They're going to give us no money per race, but they're going to give us $4 million up front. Excellent. So that's good. We've got all three slots filled up here. Now we've got the first slot taken care of here. We've got a sponsor from China that's going to pay us for seven more races and 750000 up front they've given us. And then each race, they're going to give us 650000 Okay, let's take a look at what we can get for this slot. Okay, they want us to finish 14th to get the money or 16th to get the money. Now, I'm going to choose this one because I'm not sure we have the car and capabilities to do that just yet. So it's a deal for 10 races. They're going to give us a million dollars up front and 75000 per race. We'll accept that. We need all the money we and help we can get. Okay, so we don't have any offers right now from anybody for this particular slot. Okay, so that takes care of our sponsors. We come back over to finances. You can see, as well as at the top of the screen, we have 500, or excuse me, $5.5 million with our income per race is $358,000 right now. So we'll have to keep that in mind as we sign folks uh, and, and spend that money on new parts. Okay, so where do we want to go? Well, let's come back to scouting and see what type of race mechanics are out there real quick. Uh, again, I know our video is, is running a little bit long, but this is our first video, and there's a lot of things to see uh, even before we get to our very first race. Okay, I am interested in seeing, let's see, I don't want to see anybody who is already uh, with another team because we're not going to do any buyouts. And most of these folks are probably not going to be interested in us. Uh, let's see. Right here we have a very good race engineer. Okay. And again, she's from America. So let's approach her and see if she's interested. She is interested. Okay, excellent. Okay, let's start the negotiations. All right, wages are fairly important to her. So you can see we've only got so much money per race. What is the maximum here? So 93,000 is the maximum and she is about a three out of five. So I am going to, uh, this is a person I want to keep for a while. So I'm going to make this a little bit high. She wants a long-term contract, which interests me as well because of her ratings. She'd like a nice sign-on bonus. Of course, wouldn't we all? So from 11,000 here, all the way up to 112. Wow. Okay, let's go. Let's go ahead and go ninety thousand. It's a one-time sign-on bonus, and bonus size isn't very important. All right, so we'll give her if we finish eighth or above. Let's see, from nine thousand all the way up to ninety. So, all right, so she says this is not that important. So we're going to go with twenty-seven thousand. Okay, let's go ahead and send that offer over. Okay and back our way out so we've got janet that we've approached and let's see if there's somebody else that we might want to approach uh, actually i think i'm going to stop here for right now because i'm a little concerned about the money that i'm going to have now so how are we going to know if they accept our offer well oh under the calendar we can see that there are various things that happen each day. Right now, we don't have a lot going on. It's before the season. Thanks for coming along uh, for the beginning of our Let's Play series of Motorsport Manager, and stay tuned for more as we progress through our career.